You're listening to the Battle Ready Podcast. My name is Aaron McManus, and I'm here with my dad, Erwin Raphael McManus. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great, and I hope all of our listeners are doing great as well. I hope they are all great. If you are listening to us right now, just want to let you know, we have a new YouTube channel. Go to the link in our bio of this YouTube episode if you're watching on Mosaic's channel or go to the Instagram in the link tree, the link in bio. You can subscribe to the new YouTube channel. We are going to transition to this new channel. It will be ours, Battle Ready People. That sounds exciting. Yes. It will be exciting. So go to this YouTube channel. We're going to have we're going to throw up some special stuff. So if you're listening to right now, we are going to try and have another little conversation that we can feature there that you won't hear anywhere else. So go to the YouTube, subscribe, share with your friends. Maybe we can incentivize this a little bit, but we'll figure it out. So subscribe to the new YouTube channel. We were talking about masks, and you had an experience this morning. I did. And it's I, it's odd because I think I've only been told to put my mask on like one time, like on act, like it was only one, I think one time I was walking to the coffee shop, it like fell down and then I put it back up. It was like very nominal, not a big deal. This morning though, this morning though, I don't know why it was different. I, I've i complied to the fullest extent of all of the rules. And if you know me, I don't like rules at all. You do not like rules. I do not. But you I, do like when other people follow your rules. I don't really create many rules. A few. If, if here's the thing, it's no, no, I really don't actually. What rules do I create? I don't know. Um, don't edit you during the Battle Ready Podcast. That's not a rule. You can edit me at the end. That's literally why we have Austin. <laughs> no, I know. That's, <laughs> it's so good. Just don't edit me in the moment. It's true. You're a lot a lot like me. I hate rules. And you don't have many rules. I don't. I don't have any many rules at all. I yeah. kind of pretty much hate rules. So please tell me. I'm, I love. I love rules. So please tell me what my rules are. You do not love rules. No, tell me what my <laughs> rules are. You said I don't like to follow them, but I like to create them. You. No, like, no. If you're gonna talk trash, talk trash. But let's let's go. Let's go for it. You don't like it when it's loud, so you want people to be quiet. I want people to not make obnoxious <laughs> sounds. <laughs> and so, but that's sort of, probably because I'm like a little like have Asperger's <laughs> a little bit probably. But that's kind of a rule. Keep it keep it quiet. Yes. Keep it chill. Don't get too tense. And I angst. hate messy. And you don't like messy. No, no. You don't like people touching your stuff. What stuff? Clothes. No, no. Clothes are fine. Just don't wash them. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't try to do my laundry or anything like that. Okay, those might be a few. Rules. You can wear my clothes <laughs> if I like you, <laughs> and you can never put on my sunglasses. Okay. literally ever. If you want to end our friendship, <laughs> that's right. Put my sunglasses you on your me, face. You won't let me try your sunglasses. No, your you won't let too, me try on no, your hat. Your head's too big. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a known fact. Your head is big. It is your fault. You you established this truth. Your head is big. My head is small. I don't want my sunglasses. I found sunglasses <laughs> that fit my head, not your head. <laughs> I don't want to have to go back and readjust them. Well, we are I, fighting now. We had such good energy. Now we're fighting. No, no, we have we have good energy. This is good. All right. So back to back to you hate rules. But I, I do make a lot of rules. I guess now that you're saying it, <laughs> you have rules. You don't share. You That's don't not share. A rule. No, you don't share. You don't like to share your food. I do share. No, you don't. If no, you, you don't. If, no, you, if, no, you, if, you know, generosity and sharing are two different things. If you ask me for a bite of my food, what will I do? You give me the plate and order a new plate. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's sharing. If I That's ask sharing. you for a sip of your drink, you will give me. You'll get a new drink and you'll give me yours. That's right because I'm a sharer. <laughs> I share a hundred percent because I do not like I've, sharing back. <laughs> I've, been, I've been at amazing dinners with you where like incredible hosts will order all this food mm -hmm. and you'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to eat any of that. I just want this one thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're going to share. We are not going to share. You're going to share. I'm going to have this one thing. Well, a lot of it is because I travel so much and people always want me to eat what they want me to eat. Yes. And so they quote, we're all going to share. Then they order everything that they want. And without asking me, you know, do I like beets or do I want this or that? And yeah. And so I just like ordering what I enjoy eating. I like beets. You don't like beets, huh? I do not like beets. I, I think if beets are done well, they're actually good. You know how a good restaurant, you know how you know a restaurant's good? A lot of people say it's how they cook the chicken. I think it's how they make beets because beets are nasty. That's some nasty stuff right there. I, but if I, you can I, make it taste good, what you have done, I it's turned the way darkness you, to light. No, right I thought, there. I thought, the way you know a restaurant's good is how they do the French fries. <laughs> no, that's not true. That is not true. That is not true. That is not true. Come on, In and Out. <laughs> in and Out has terrible French fries, and I'm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, so we're okay. Gonna, so we're you're getting coffee this morning. So I got coffee this morning. I, I feel like I've complied with the rules. I actually really have. 
Mariah said something really early on. Aaron McManus, do not get on like TMZ or Instagram or go viral because you don't want to wear a mask and you walk into a grocery store. So I've complied. <laughs> I've complied because I care about other people. I complied because I, I don't really care about my health in that way. I'm pretty healthy. I'm, I'm pretty confident. I'm and you're good. not worried about getting COVID. I'm not or... worried in the slightest about getting COVID. I haven't been since the beginning. Then I was at the at dinner this weekend and I was like, who got it? And two of like the five people had gotten it. And I was like, who was careful during all of this? And they're all like, none of us, <laughs> none of us. We wore it with other people, but we, we, we saw the people, we hung out with people the whole time. Mm-hmm. Look, I don't feel we are being irresponsible. I don't feel, I don't give the government that level of control in my life. Mm-hmm. We could talk about a lot of things because we, we've been having this discussion for a little bit mm-hmm. of I feel like the government doesn't necessarily tell us the whole truth, but then they expect the whole truth back. We're not going to go into that. What no, ha- I actually thought that was a great insight. I might co- swing back to that because I thought it was a really great perspective from you. So basically, <laughs> me and coffee kid, kid of the coffee shop, this is the coffee shop we go to every day. So you're standing outside on the sidewalk. I'm standing outside on the sidewalk at like the to-go menu, which already has like a full-on like plexi panel. Right. Plexi, yeah, panel. And, and... He's wearing a mask. I was wearing a mask. I had a bandana. It fell. I was 15 feet away. I was like in the street. I was waiting because there was like a line. So I mm-hmm. was like waiting to order. These ladies were ordering. They, they, they go over. I come up before I could even take a step. Hey, sir, can you please put your mask up? And I literally said, hey, man, relax. I haven't even had the chance. Like you calm down, like calm down, please. Tranquilo, please. <laughs> slow down and he it was and he was i think he realized how how like uh aggressive he came off mm-hmm. because of how i i don't i didn't put i don't i love this place it's my local i don't want to make this place awkward all right so the guy looks at you and says sir put on your mask he says sir can you please put on your mask do you have a mask somewhere one, I'm like, do I have a mask somewhere? It's literally hanging around my neck. It, is li- it was like literally like halfway <laughs> up my face. Like the mask wasn't even, I wasn't being blatantly disrespectful. I was just waiting in line and I was in the sure. street. I wasn't even like waiting in line, I was in the street. Yeah. It was just so annoying. So that I just was like, hey man, like I'm just gonna give you, like I'm just gonna say, I like, I come here every day. I follow the rules every day. You don't need to be rude. You also need to read the news. All right, but let's talk about this mass thing and the insanity of what's going on in our country for right now. And and uh, our nation's in, in strange transition in yes. terms of where masks are being required, where they're not being required. I mean, I talked to someone in the Midwest. They told me that they- Wait, can, can I finish ahead. my story? Sure. So the guy tells me, sir, please put your mask on. Do you have a mask? I'm like, yes, it's hanging around my neck. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and, then, and then I go to like, I order and then I pay and I'm saying things to him and he's ignoring me. I'm like, hey. Like, he's this young kid. I, I, hey, I come here every day and I follow the rules. I'm outside right now. I'm not even in, like, the little, like, halfway in, halfway out part. I'm, mm-hmm. like, straight up outside. You don't need to be so aggressive. Also, they've just said, this: the government, the CDC, <laughs> the president, whether you like him or not, has said things will open up within a month. And then it made me think. I was I went to a comedy <laughs> show last night. I went to a comedy show. It was outside on, like, a back patio of a restaurant. My friend's girlfriend was throwing it for like the first event back at, at, the, at her work. And, and so a couple of buddies went and just to support her. And basically he goes on to say, he's like, I don't get it. Hold on. Is COVID's over in a month. So we're wearing, <laughs> we're wearing masks. I have to wear my mask up to the stage. And the whole time he's like wiping down his mic with a, with a Lysol <laughs> wipe, which is really funny. I think he was just doing it as like a little bit. And he's like, I don't get it. So like now all of a sudden COVID decided to be over. Did COVID tell us this? <laughs> Did COVID talk to the government? So now we're good. And, and it, it dawned on me. I brought it up this morning. I was like, okay, so h- how come all of a sudden it's over now and we're good to go? We did say this, I think last September, that um, did we? we did. We said Trump would lose the election, Biden would win, and then everything would, and then everything will go back to normal by May, June, um, and it looks like we're right on track to what um, I projected, and months and months ago, and you did project it because I felt a lot of it wasn't simply scientific; a lot of it was also political. And so I, I measured the time frame based on politics. I couldn't measure based on sciences. I'm not a yeah. scientist, you know, right. but I can look at culture and look at the political implications. I have this map here where it talks about the states that have um, reopened. And 
Um, in purple are all the states. It looks like it's maybe 30 states. I don't know how many states, but it's the largest states that are wide open, already open. It's Texas and Florida and Arizona and Nevada, uh, Idaho. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, Montana. I mean, it goes on and on and on. I, on YouTube? I don't know if we can show it. We can, can we show it? it? Oh, yeah. great. Show the map. But it like... So Amer- America's purple. So Wait, purple... Can I see it? Can yeah, purple is free America. So pretty much the whole <laughs> middle. The whole middle minus... And some of the sides. Minnesota and <laughs> Illinois. Wait, but... Yeah. Colorado's not open. And uh, and I think Wyoming's not open. And New Mexico is... Yeah. Yeah. So... So we got all these states in purple who are wide open, and then it and then it says the, the next layer is uh, states opening up in May, like um, Minnesota and Pennsylvania and Maine. A few states are opening up in May, and then there are others that are opening up June or later. Now the the or later part is what makes me nervous, right? <laughs> because right. that's California. And we're in the June or later. That's Illinois, that's North Carolina, Virginia, and DC, Ohio. Uh, but then um, I, I would think we're in the worst situation, but there's there's a next worst level called criteria. They have a criteria for when they're going to open up, but they, they haven't set a date. And that states like New Mexico and Michigan, they have a criteria, but they haven't set a date. So those two states are going to be in limbo. But then there are no criteria or date set. That's like Washington and Oregon, right? Washington, Colorado, Wyoming, New York, Kentucky. Now, I don't know what... No date set has been set. No, Unifies there's no those date states. set in Wyoming because there's no people in Wyoming, <laughs> which is like the beautiful thing. They're, they're chill. Everybody <laughs> wants to move to Wyoming. What are you talking I about? I love that place. It's amazing. And, but here's the crazy thing. How is it possible for half the United States, maybe geographically three-fourths of the United States, to be completely wide open, no six feet of separation, no masks. Um, so to be sarcastic, no COVID, right? You no know? COVID. And, uh, and then you have states like California that are saying, um, hey, uh, we're not open today, but we've given you the date that COVID's over. <laughs> How can you decide COVID is over? Is it June 16th or something like that? And... Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. June 16th. We can't even predict the weather. We're going to predict the date that a global pandemic is no longer relevant in the state of California. <laughs> also, I do. It is. It is very interesting, right? Because, like, whether you believe here's here's this is how I was explaining this. It's not that I don't believe that it exists. I believe it exists. Of course, COVID exists. Of course, right. of course it exists. We've had lots of friends get have it. Mm-hmm. Most of them okay, right? Yeah. I don't know anyone who's died. I know I have friends whose grandparents have passed and away. I do know some people have passed away. Young, though? No. Old. No, no. Old, over the age of 60, 70? Most people I know are probably over the age of 70 almost. Yeah. Okay. And and so I don't really know any young people who have. Obviously, I'm sure mm-hmm. there are. And so I don't want to be insensitive to it. But it is a huge thing. I don't think the masks actually do much. But I haven't been sick in a year and a half. And I normally... We get colds and Mm -hmm. flu and strep throat because we're always speaking and always talking and always shaking hands and X, Y, Z. So it's been a great health year. I'm in the worst shape of my life because there's been no (laughs) gyms open and and I, you know, running outside doesn't do enough. Gyms are closed and donut shops are open. (laughs) Donut shops are open. I don't eat donuts. (laughs) No, you really really don't. At what point, like, okay, so, so President Biden says, like, we don't need to do this anymore. We can, like, really, like be more lenient. And then it's up to each state to decide. Right. But but even when you talk about trusting the science, like I would say like Washington, let's say Seattle. Seattle sees itself as very progressive, um, very informed, very educated. But wouldn't progressive mean you don't trust the science as much? <laughs> Not necessarily, but you're let's progressively <laughs> you're trusting it more lenient. <laughs> well I, I think people try to say that being progressive is trying trusting in science, but actually it, it I feel like being progressive is oftentimes um, confused with um, being socio- being so, uh, really more connected to sociology than to science. Okay. Now, uh, here's the thing. How our, so? Our, what does our, that mean? Well, our friend Lawrence, his kid, his son isn't playing baseball. Isn't? Uh, is playing baseball is right playing now. Baseball, yeah. And he said he's a coach and all the children have to wear masks yeah. outdoors to play baseball, which violates the science, by the way. Yeah. You, you're just not going to get COVID outdoors. And, and you're certainly not going to get COVID playing the outfield by yourself. 
And secondly, and uh, yeah, um, maybe if you're like shortstop or catcher, but you, you know, but if you're catcher, you already have a you mask. You have a mask, it's, and then as coaches, they're not allowed to touch the ball. All right. So explain to me, okay, if you're a scientist listening, explain to me how our country has become so hysterical that we can't hear the science that says that we've known for quite a while that COVID is not transmittable uh, through surfaces. And they're afraid that we're going to get COVID by picking up a baseball and throwing it back to the pitcher. Right. But also pro baseball is already open and yep. they don't wear masks. <laughs> <laughs> and they and they and they, they there's no concern, right? It, it's very odd. And also, we know that COVID doesn't isn't transmitted through children as like re, as heavily. They're just I don't think there are any they're cases not of, affected. Of I think they can they can any get serious it. cases of right. There's no serious cases with, with right. COVID. Right. There hasn't been much. What are we saying? What I'm talking about. Wait, is, what are we saying? What I'm saying is that we're confusing hysteria with science. Okay. And so here we are in this transitional period, and Texas. Has been open since March. Their their COVID cases have gone down. The death rate has gone down. Every indicator has become better. And New York is shut down, and Washington is shut down, and they're not doing as well as Texas and Florida. Right. And and then our president calls the governor of Texas and the governor of Florida as Neanderthals and telling them that they're doing the Neanderthal thinking, Who said President this? Biden. Yeah. And I'm going, wait a minute. Like, is it Neanderthal thinking to reopen the state and its economy when the science actually tells you there's been an overreaction to this pandemic and that we're going to be fine? Wait, I'm trying to find... And his. even with the vaccines... Oh, he deleted it. Wait, keep going, keep going. Even with the vaccines. I, I, okay, I'm just going to be straight up. Wait, hold on. Can what? I say something real okay, quick? Okay, go ahead. Okay, so there was just like really, really like goofy video of Joe Biden, President Joe Biden. Um, he's our president, even when he does dumb stuff. Um, and he does dumb stuff too, which is really funny. But I like, I'm, I'm going to make fun of both of them. But he had this video and it was so like actually terrible and manipulative and hilarious did you see it brooke he was like on he was on the oval office like actually not that the last guy didn't embarrass the oval office enough but it's like we got a season two of goofy old white men doing weird stuff in the oval office he's on his desk and he says get uh get vaxxed or get masked he said get yeah get, get vaxxed or maxed yeah get vaxxed or masked they deleted it off his instagram that's hilarious it's not on it anymore well, I think the thing is that at first, see, this is where you, you got to at least acknowledge we're being manipulated because at first we we're told you get a vaccine, you still have to max, mask, you still have to have six feet of separation. There is no change. You're still in danger. You still have to wear it outdoors. And frankly, the motivation to get a vaccine, if nothing's going to change, was zero. And so they realized that they were affecting the um, outcome of people getting a vaccination because what's the point of getting a vaccine if you still have to be indoors, still have to be separated, still have to be masked, still can't go to a restaurant, still can't, still can't go to a sporting event. Brooke is doing this. <laughs> what? She's just oh. she's dancing. She's like, keep going, keep going. It, it keep just going. it's just ridiculous. And yeah, and and, and <sighs> so then they have to change the optics on it. They have to say no, no, no. If you get the vaccine. You'll be free. So now we're going to create two different sets of standards in society. We have the vax and the non-vax. And if you're not vaxxed, you can't go to sports events. You can't eat in restaurants. You have to wear a mask. But Oh, I did have a thing at a sports event. But how are you going to know the difference? Or now people have to prove their their status. And uh, well, yeah, wait, did you look, read the article <laughs> on CNN that said, please stop forging your vaccine cards? <laughs> I have so many friends. We have. We know someone. We have friends who have done this. Oh, I have friends. I have friends of friends. People who don't go to church. Just normal people. Normal human civilians. That are paying people to go get the vaccine for them. But take their but take their IT. Because <laughs> they want the card. Because they want to be able to fly and have to quarantine all the things and go to the games. But they don't, they're like, absolutely not. I'm not putting that thing in my body. Mm -hmm. It is crazy how we have two straight up different camps. And I will say uh, the, the pressure manipulation is actually, if you want to talk about racism. Yeah. It, uh, 
white people are more likely to want the vaccine. And Latinos and black Americans are less likely Logan, we, to want the vaccine. We, and I say we because just because the color of my skin is olive, we know better. We're still, you are a true Latin American. We know better. And so we, I went ahead. We, no, This is where I fully claim no, being Latino. I got the vaccine. I, I, I had my two shots. You did. I did. And um, now I want to be so clear. I didn't feel that I needed it. I wasn't concerned about my health. And I... Um, why did you get it then? I, I got it for multiple reasons. One, I do Tell think, me the reasons. Uh, one, my wife wanted to get it and it wouldn't help her if she got it and I didn't get it. Yeah. Even though it would help her because she wouldn't have to worry about getting COVID. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I wanted to do it with her just to support her. Secondly, I didn't want people saying, oh, he's a pastor, so he's against science. So I did it more also for the optics. And then thirdly, um, if there is something wrong with the vaccine, I'd rather be a part of the experimental generation. I'm already in my 60s. If I, you know, if I get sick or if COVID has some terrible yeah. side effects, I'd rather them work it out with me than with you or, or the generations to come. So I feel like a part of my contribution to society can be to be a part of the experiment of the vaccine. Well, it, it brings, okay, so you, okay. There's a lot I want to unwrap there. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like the vaccine as a pastor or as a Christian or as a person of faith or follower of Jesus, I'm saying it as a human. I don't want it. I don't want it. LeBron don't doesn't want it either. <laughs> well, that's the irony. Ooh. Oh, should we bring that up? Oh, yeah, let's bring that up. Should we Just bring it up? Minute. Should we bring it up? Should we bring up the fact that LeBron <laughs> played in the last two games, though he violated health and safety protocols for the NBA? Would say you like your fan in the box? Yeah, there's nothing to be said. I know nothing about this story. You don't know anything about this story? <laughs> you're pleading that you're, you're denying. Well, what's amazing to me is when we're watching the Warriors Laker game, I said, I actually said, uh, in, in fact, I texted to you guys in the group text, LeBron was out partying with Drake last night. Now, if I knew that, then the NBA knew it. <laughs> he wasn't partying, he was at a function. <laughs> is that a group? It's a, it's a tequila function. It, yeah, it was it was a like promote a brand that he's a part of. What, I don't care that he's a part of it. I don't care that he was so, there. But but this is what I care about. It's the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy. And then we're watching the game. And you know he's not vaccinated, so you have someone who's yeah. not vaccinated. But is it at an event <laughs> in a public space? Wait, it's, is it public knowledge he's not vaccinated? Because people have talked about it on the media, right? In the media. Yes, you're right. He's he's one of the few players who doesn't want to get it. I don't blame me. The man, I don't should, either. The man should have the right to not get the vaccine. It makes me <laughs> like him more. <laughs> no, I, I'm really concerned the way that I think we're, he's getting, a, we're getting accustomed to being manipulated. I also think he's a pragmatist, and I think he also doesn't like to be controlled either, which I yeah. I, I resonate with those attributes of LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the, the, the psychological impact on our culture is going ha- is gonna to be long-term. And if you think about it, if you don't get a vaccine, but everyone who's who cares about it does get a vaccine, everyone who's vulnerable does get a vaccine, you not having a vaccine actually does not affect them. No, it and, only affects you. And well, it, I guess they could I guess they could say that like you can carry it easier if you haven't gotten the vaccine. You can catch it easier, more easily. So then you can give it to other people. And if you've gotten the vaccine, you can still get it. All right, but if everyone in society who's vulnerable and everyone who feels that you know, uh, the vaccine will help them gets a vaccine, you actually will have herd immunity. And if all the people who are less likely to get it and actually are more resilient and yeah. COVID wouldn't have an effect on them, yeah. just, just from pure evolutionary theory, yeah. society's gonna get stronger Right, and we're going to be fine, and but my, that's not, but my my whole point right now is, like I think it was Rachel Maddow who said that she's going to have to change her entire perspective because she sees people without a mask as a threat, and right. I'm like, what is the thinking that has created this level of hysteria where we see people without a mask? It's not hysteria. As a it is it is vol it's, it's volatility and it's toxic and it's and it's creating. And it's create it's very de- it's very divisive language, mm-hmm. and it creates enemies between two parties, which yeah. is really tough, right? Because I think one, it, I don't want to wear a mask. I don't think I need to. I don't think you need to. But we live in LA. Despite me wanting to live, I wish 
like we live in one of the most f- free places in the world and yet we feel so confined but I, I was talking to a young guy who was in china during young kid from la he was at he 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 came into the offices and he was in china during covid he was doing like a year abroad teaching english and they said they were putting um stickers on the outside of his door to know if he if ever all of the people on the hall um, because they were like in dorms or like student housing mm-hmm. or teacher housing or something, it didn't know if they were if they had left or not. And they had like an app where it controlled like their Metro card. Uh, wow. They put like finances to buy groceries, like kind of like an Apple Pay, mm-hmm. but for I guess the I guess in Shanghai or in Hong Kong, I'm not sure where he was. Mm-hmm. So everything he did was tracked. They were only allowed to get food every other day to to leave. So you have to get food for two days. Wow. And they would track everywhere you'd go. So they knew exactly where you got onto the subway. They knew if you went to the grocery store. At the grocery store, you had to show them a pass that you were approved to be outside of your house in your room for that day. Mm. So we're incredibly free yeah, but in it, context. But, but in terms of my personal experience, I went to one Clippers game, had to wear the mask for three hours. Uh, you couldn't have anything to drink or to eat. Within the first few minutes, a woman comes up, holds up a sign in my face telling me to put my mask back, back up, please. And then I'm an LAFC game. They're great there. They did They're allow the us to have food, but they did keep coming up to me going, please make sure your mask is up and I when you're not eating. I got, I got in trouble there too. And I, I just decided that it just isn't worth the experience. Like, I, it I isn't worth the experience. You know, it's, you, you're, you're paying with your hard-earned money to go to these games. And I'm like, I'd rather just watch it at home on television than yeah. be in that experience where it's it's so limited and it's not dynamic. And so I, I'm just going to kind of wait. I figure next year there'll be no mass and there'll be no six feet of separation and we'll be hopefully back into a full swing of of uh, of, of society that has community so, and relationships. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Like I get this question a lot. Mm-hmm. Did you get the vaccine with my friends right, go, but going I said, out? Yeah, but, I didn't. but I did get the vaccine. You I, did so, get it. I didn't get it. And, and I try to encourage you to get it, mostly because I want us to be able to travel and go to events, and I think they're going to create a two-class system. If you don't get the vaccine, you're going to constantly— And I'm still believing in a free America where I, I think so, at some point— like, what is it, the governor of Texas basically said, you cannot shun someone for, for not wanting to wear a mask or not wanting to get a vaccine. You should do that. You can't not hire someone. Yeah. You can't not admit them to a game. You can't not admit them to a restaurant. You have to accept all people who are American. Yeah, and it, it does. And it so I, I I'm vaccinated because I wanted to be able to speak openly and strongly against the social, cultural, political pressure for people to be forced to be vaccinated. This is the thing, though. I'm not. That way a, I could talk about it. Yeah, I'm not a get. I I was gonna get it because you really wanted to go to the bas- the NBA playoffs. So I was like, okay, let me go get it so I can get so I can go to the playoffs with my dad. I'll put whatever in my body because I, he wants to go see the Clippers. I'll do that for you. I'll do that. I will do that for you because we're best friends. And then <laughs> they said we still have to wear our masks. And you were like, I'm over this. Like if I get vaccinated and then we're in a, a vaccine section and like I still have to wear my mask, this doesn't ma- even make sense. Yeah, I got the vaccine so that I could uh, be free. Be free. And um, I, I hate the fact that I had to make that decision going, wow, I'm going to lose a lot of my personal freedoms if I don't have this vaccine. Yeah. It would have been so much better if – people had been encouraged to get the vaccine as they felt it was necessary for their own health. Yeah, for and sure. Because I, I look at things creating precedent. And uh, so I'm not as worried about COVID-19 and, and, and the vaccine as I am. What are the freedoms? What are the choices? What's the thinking that has shifted as a society right. and going forward? Right. And... Um, and, and if I'm being asked to trust the science, then I think it's fair for me to say, then you need to prove it. No, you, you, have, you need to prove it, but you need to respond to the science too. So even as you- What do you mean by that? The science has changed. You see, I, I see I'm not a person who holds people to their mistakes, but let's be really frank that science is wrong a lot. A lot. And because it's scientists, mm-hmm. there is no science in terms of as a person. There's not a person named science. Scientists are evaluating data. And as that data changes, you then must change based on the data, regardless of your political or social position. And if you're manipulating the data to get your outcome, you cannot then obligate other people to trust the science. 
Mm. There is no science about surfaces. There is no science about the ball having COVID. There is no science uh, about the danger of getting uh, COVID outdoors. And we should have been allowed to go to beaches from the very beginning. We should have. We forget so easily what they took away in the beginning. Yeah. Keep going. You're on a great road. Yeah. No. And and so what I'm saying is okay. I'm, I'm not dogmatic enough to go, you were wrong about the science, so now I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to say, you were wrong about the science, but now that you have better science, then you have to change your position. Mm-hmm. And I don't see California doing that at all. I mean, I live in a state where uh, the science doesn't seem to be relevant uh, to the political policies and mandates. And it, it, Newsom, I, Newsom yeah. has done. Newsom messed up. French laundry really hurt us. And that's what lets me know Pelosi. I mean, I'm going, yeah. they didn't really believe what they're saying. No, she's they, flying back and forth on her private jets. And, and you know, and, and I'm going, they believed what a lot of other people are saying, but it wasn't Which, politically expedient to agree. I'll be really clear. I'm not knocking private jets. You got one. You want to give us one. You got one. You want to let us ride on one. You got one. You <laughs> ride on one. I'm happy for you. All of the above. <laughs> but I'm just saying... There was a lot of conversation. We, you know, we know people who are like cl- closer to these people, and there's there was a lot of like hypocrisy going on. And I think that's the issue, right? It's it's not that you can't like. I wish because Newsom essentially, if you don't know, our governor Gavin Newsom, he ate in a really nice restaurant. Like how nice is like twelve hundred dollars a plate um, in Napa Valley or Sonoma, one of those little towns up there, and he was eating inside with like a bunch of people. The crazy thing about that is that. He was. He could have just eaten out at the garden, which the garden they have like they have like a little yeah. inside and a huge outside because they kind of adapted like everyone else to COVID. But he got photographed being inside, and that was just a bad look. And then instead of just like coming out and being like, "Hey, I was with my friends," it was like we we're in a bubble, like our people, and we didn't we did no masks. You know, he he had he had just said like you're not allowed to eat inside, and then he gets caught eating inside. So I think there's just a lot of, and I don't even care if you just been like, "Hey, you know what? Like I messed up. <laughs> like I shouldn't have been eating inside," but. I'm the governor. <laughs> like I, I get to do special things. Yeah, but I, 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 I can understand a person who says you need to wear masks, be socially separated, and not go inside to public spaces, and then they don't do it. Right. Right. I, right. I can understand a person who says, "Hey, I don't think you should wear a mask, and I think you should be allowed to be outdoors, and you should be able to hang out with your your friends and your social group." And uh, if if that's uh, and, and then I go, okay, that's what they're doing. I don't like when they feel that we as citizens are so stupid that we need to be told what to do, but they don't need to be told what to do. That's creating an elitist system where the rules apply to the masses, but not to those in power. And I think that's the great danger um, uh, of uh, some yeah. of what's happened in this last year and a half. And I, I, you know, if, and it's how you say it, right? If he had said, hey, the reality is this, we don't know enough. So we're asking you not to do this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like then, like please just be careful. You know. But it was like yeah. the science says this. You need to do this. And it was and a mandate. Not allowed. And, and now we're told what to do. And if we catch those restaurants letting you inside, we'll cut off. And what people don't know is like what was happening in LA is that they were saying we're going to cut off. Uh, the Department of Water and Power was like manip- like yeah. really controlling, and manipulating people. Going, if we catch people inside, if we catch you breaking the rules, we'll cut off your water. We'll cut off your power. We'll kill your permits. Turn we'll off remove- the lights. Turn off the lights. We'll kill your business, and they have they have so many people, which is pretty crazy. So there's like a whole movement in LA where like all the like Latino and like black owned uh, shops are putting um, French laundry signs over their actual signs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're like we're French laundry. Yeah. We're good. And so I want to be so clear here because you, you know I have to make the decisions for Mosaic in this regard. And Mosaic, we've still not opened up, to, and uh, we're still not open to the public. We um, we still haven't opened our doors in that way on Sundays, and so we've. We're, we're almost a year and a half into this thing, and, uh, and it's been really difficult. So I have not tried to I, – I've tried so carefully to posture our church in L.A. because it's a, you know, we're in an incredibly liberal city yeah. saying, hey, we're, we're for the city, we're for the science, we're for health, we're for uh, safety protocols, we're not irresponsible. And a lot of Christians have asked me, why haven't you opened up to defy the government? And I'm going, because I'm actually not trying to defy the government. I'm trying to reach a city. There's, right. a, there's a difference. And, um, and, and on top of that, 
opening up where everyone is six feet separated and everyone's wearing masks and you can't, quote, sing. And it's insane. But just down the street in Orange County, an hour away, there are churches that are wide open, no masks, everybody's together. But I can tell you, wherever that's happening, those are Republican areas. Those are um, very, very conservative, more right-wing areas. And that's their constituency. That's who they're reaching. Right. See, what people don't understand about Mosaic is Mosaic actually reaches people from the far left. Mosaic reaches people who are progressive. Mosaic reaches people who are socialists. And those people are genuinely more afraid of COVID, genuinely um, more concerned about um, the mass and the, and the separation. And it would actually posture us in a negative way, and they wouldn't show up. Right. And, and, and they, so that's been a part of the journey for us. For sure. And I think we've seen it even on our own team and our own family where, mm-hmm. where everyone's kind of experienced this last year and a half very differently. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone had a little had a lot of fear in the beginning. And then as we quickly discovered, whether through our own experiences or through the media, through the news, through the science, through maybe just being impatient and being over it and just going, OK, it's done to ourselves that that we've all we've all had different outcomes of understanding i i do think because we've gone really far with this but i to, to just bring it back to to some level of i think maybe practical thing is like is is we we really do need to be careful in our society to 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 what level we let whether it's the government whether it's organizations whether it is schools or who we work for or even just each other what level of like control we're letting other people have in our lives because i think for me i'm going i don't really want the vaccine because i don't know i don't know why i'm not against it like if you get it i'm happy for you and i'm not like if you get it i don't the the irony is this if you get it i don't care but if i don't get it you definitely care yeah and that for me that logic doesn't sit right for me and that's where i'm like oh i don't know if i want to get it because i don't know if i want i like being the one people kind of have a problem with sometimes and then I and then they have a problem with me and then I get sad they have a problem with me so I teeter the line <laughs> yeah but it really it really bothered me when I started seeing people saying we need to shun and shame everyone who has not received the vaccine oh 100% and I would love to find that video of uh, President Joe Biden saying get vaxxed or get masked because it's and we're not going to play it on the podcast I just want to find it for my own personal life because it was so goofy so goofy that goofy it was cartoony and this is how you know that's not how presidents behave no and this is part of the way you know it's optics and this is what i wanted to just focus on in some ways when president biden did the zoom call with all the world leaders he had a mask on even though you cannot transmit covid through zoom but then when he took the photograph with him and his wife and, and the former president jimmy carter and the President uh, and Carter, who are in their 90s, I believe, and would be incredibly susceptible to COVID, no masks were worn. And so if they really lived with that level of fear and yeah. conviction that you have to wear masks and keep six feet of separation, but they did not have six feet of separation between them and the Carters, and they were not wearing masks, and I'm going, that was actually a vulnerable situation. The Zoom call was not. And that, look, I don't think it takes... A conspiracy theory perspective to go. Reasonable minds could could look at that and go, "This is all about optics. This is about politics. That's not a legitimate conviction about the concern of masks and COVID." No. So how do we how do we be intelligent and process all of the information that we are constantly receiving from the world, from anyone, from everyone? Well, I think one of the ways is to not allow yourself to move into conspiracy thinking where you see the other side as evil and has some kind of of um, maniacal plan. And, and yeah. I think this is part of the problem is that I have friends on the far right who really think there's this massive global conspiracy. Yeah, they think Bill Gates is the Antichrist. And and then they have, I have people on the left who see everyone on the right as this, you know, all, uneducated and, 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 and racist and, and they're all doing it together there's some yeah. giant conspiracy and and what we need to realize is that whenever there's uncertainty whenever there is fear we're usually not postured to make our best decisions and so i think sometimes we forget scientists can be afraid 
Politicians can be afraid. Presidents can be afraid. Senators can be afraid. Just because they hold positions of power does not mean that they're not making decisions based on fear. Mm -hmm. And so you have to extricate the fear and go, okay, let's look at this as objectively as possible mm -hmm. and ask the real questions about what's going on here. And so I've always um, maintained a continuous message that uh, COVID is real, that that real people have died, that it uh, real uh, that I, I it can be have tremendously negative consequences for people even if they do not pass away. Right, right. And but that the response to COVID, with the quarantine and the manipulation of science to try to create a, a almost a a massive compliance, has not been merited by the science. And and so as we open up, yes, June 16, COVID will be open, over. And I guess people will no longer have to wear their mask. And Do you believe it, though? Do you think it'll actually happen? I don't know because I think— I'm the, so torn. Look, I think there are states that are still going to make, make decisions based on fear. And they're not going to make uh, they're, they're not going to make their choices based on science or or even calculated risk. Which, by the way, life is a calculated risk. Every day, you face something that might actually end you, that might actually end your life. You cannot live your life based on what you're afraid of. You have to live your life based on what you want to accomplish and do in your life. And my greatest frustration is for people like you and younger than you and your generation um, who are, who are um, in danger of having narrowed what you think your life can be like and the, the freedoms that you um, can have, the opportunities you can have, you do not get a year back ever. No, no. And it wasn't a good year either. Yeah. See, I'm going, wait a minute. You're trying to save, let's say, my last year. Maybe my last year is going to be when I'm 86, right? Or, and you're going to save my year from 86 to 87, but you're stealing my year from... 61 to 62. That's incredible. And I'm going, wait, no, no. You see, you just stole someone's year from 22 to 23 to save their life from 93 to 94. Yeah. And that for me is irrational. That doesn't make sense to me. This isn't what we were actually going to talk about what today. What are we going to actually talk about? We were going to talk about making sure that um, there's real perspective on opposition, like that people are not your enemies just because they disagree with you. Yeah. So oh, they, this is a great... Yeah, because there are people listening to us right now who agree and disagree with us in terms of All masks and quarantine and social distancing and Absolutely. pandemics. <laughs> so what we'll do is maybe, do you have do you have 15 more minutes? Yeah, let's, let's have that conversation. So let's okay. have that conversation. But if you're listening to this right now, it's not going to be on this podcast. It's not going to be on this YouTube. You have to actually go and find this. This is going to be on the new YouTube channel that Battle Ooh. Ready Podcast has. So not on the podcast, not on there. Apple, not on Spotify, not on the other YouTube, on this new YouTube channel. This is going to be called, what is it called? Love your enemies or have no enemies? You're, you're not my enemy. <laughs> you're not my enemy. Okay. Check out this new podcast yeah. channel. Have, yeah. I like that. Have no enemies. Hey, I want to say thank you to everybody for listening to this this episode of Battle Ready Podcast. Everyone who supports us on Anchor and gives and, and subscribes and builds. Every person who listens on Spotify, who watches on YouTube, who can rate and review our podcast on iTunes. Go to iTunes, no matter where you're watching it. It helps people find us, helps people get this message out. Follow us on Instagram at Battle Ready Podcast. And go check out our new YouTube channel. You can go into the link in our bio on Instagram, or if you're watching YouTube, you can go into like the caption. It'll have a link, and you can hit subscribe. Check it out. There's going to be an episode talking about loving your enemies, do not become an enemy, all of those things. We're doing it together. Go do that now.